Hey, disclaimer in this episode, like I said last episode, there's not going to be no commentary for this episode. Um, it'll be back for the rest of the episodes of the series. Um, still hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Mm, stay healthy. Stay safe. And please drink water. You really dehydrated, motherfucker. You, yes you, watching this video. All this footage was done live on Twitch, so come hang out sometime. And if you want to know whenever I upload, ring that notification bell, subscribe, like the video. You know that jazz. Enjoy this highlight reel. Please, step inside. Hey, aren't these three supposed to be fighting a war? Supposed to be. Kind of a weird place for us to meet, Chairman Hoshino. Especially considering the three of you look more like you're ready to have a tea party than tear each other's throats out. Usually we meet only once a year, unless there's a need to share information face to face, as we must now. We always do what it takes to keep the Great Wall intact. Your men are killing each other out there. You don't want to stop them? Stop them? Two of my youngest men were gunned down without mercy. Leomang Turf's been raided right up to the perimeter of their base. There's no stopping any of it now. At this point, Whoever retreats first will have lost the war. I can't lay down my spear until that happens. That's pretty much the same deal for me. So then why are you two here? Gonna decide the war over a game of cards? <laughs> Not the worst idea. What the fuck? People are dying! And meanwhile you three are just hanging out playing nice? Think your men would approve? Do any of you even care what your own people think? Kasuga, there's no need to throw fits about what you don't understand. Do you know right now Captain Takabe is Xiao's prisoner? <laughs> prisoner? We're treating him more like an uninvited guest. Honestly, I'd let him go if I had one good reason to. I just don't, that's all. So you're going to sit here and do nothing? Just let the chips fall where they may? That's how it needs to be. A bunch more pointless deaths is how it needs to be? They're not pointless. Our men's willingness to fight is the entire reason we're able to serve as checks on each other. As long as the triangle remains balanced, it can hold firm against outside pressure. That's much like how Japan established separation of powers after the end of its dictatorship. It's not perfect. But it's the best solution we have. Do you see the logic there? Oh boy, a post-war history lesson. What? That's what you're comparing it to, right? Yes, because it's relevant. The post-war period is when the town's lines of power were drawn. Huh? The black market was born from the ashes of the war. It laid the foundation for modern-day Jincho. Back then, the Seiryu clan was thriving. But in Chinatown, two rival Chinese gangs were competing for dominance. The winner of that fight prospers in Chinatown to this day. The gang that lost became the Yokohama Liuman. They were driven out of Chinatown and into Jincho. The Seryu clan wasn't about to take that kind of invasion lying down. For a time, the gutters practically ran with Liumang and Seryu blood. Man, you gonna lecture until the bell rings, Professor? You want to understand what's going on? Then you need the history, you smartass. If you want to understand the fake money, that is. The Seryu clan knows about that? Yes. All the fake money printed by the Komi Jewel goes through me. But doesn't that mean the Seiryu clan is the real puppet master behind all this? How do you figure that? Mabuchi started forging Chinese Yuan, sure. But only because of the counterfeit yen. I think I'm starting to figure all this out. The Liumang brings in the paper. The Komi Jewel prints the bills. But then, the Seiryu clan keeps all the profit? Wait. Are you all in this together? Kasuga-kun, calm down. You're jumping to conclusions. 
because I'm pissed off right now. First, I'm kidnapped, accused of being a Seiryu Yakuza, then blamed for being the spark that ignites a war, nearly killed over Namba's thing. Now I'm here with the Ijing Three, who, by the way, don't even give a shit about the war. Tell me, why should I calm down? He's got a point. And you, with your damn Seiryu clan, you're the one getting the most out of this. No, because we're not the final destination of the fake yen. That will be Yutaka Hogikubo's pocket. Yutaka Hogikubo? I saw his name in an article. He's some big shot in the Citizens Liberal Party. All three of you are working together to support him politically? Why? Huh. Suddenly my history lesson seems relevant, doesn't it? Fine, get on with it. Ogikubo is the man who proposed making fake money in Ijincho. This was 60 years ago. He pitched the idea to the first Seryu chairman and first Liumang boss. A politician suggested committing federal crime to a bunch of gangsters? For real? At the time, Ogikubo was only a member of the city council. But he saw the fights breaking out between the long-established Seryu clan and the newly arrived Liumang. He understood it was, in essence, a turf war. Knowing that, he looked for solutions to stop the bloodshed. Solutions that would save lives. And eventually, he managed to find an answer. Fake money, of all things. Industry. Which in this case is, yes, fake money. Hokikubo split the roles up evenly. That way, both organizations would have a common goal. The Liumang would import special paper. The Seryu clan would print and transport the money. How did Ogi Kubo know the counterfeiting process? He didn't at first. But since he had faith in his plan and a desire for peace, he used every single connection he had to collect the raw materials, plus the recipe. Counterfeiting wasn't that difficult back then. Currency didn't have all the security features it has now. It's only gotten harder over the years. But anyway, after the first batch was printed, Agikubo used it to bribe the cops. The cops? Not the Seiryu clan or the Liumang? There would have been no point in paying off those two. That conflict goes deeper. Agikubo understood that. Okay, but why give it to the police? They wanted to control them, of course. In the blink of an eye, they became his loyal servants. That ought to surprise no one given how corruptible law enforcement tends to be. Anyway, Ogikubo had his new minions in uniform crack down on one certain region of Ijincho. Well, that doesn't sound like such a bad thing. Yeah, he was making the city safer, right? Now that was just a side effect of what he really wanted. To squash every attempt by the Seiryu to drive out the Liumang. All police resources were dedicated to that one goal. It created a tiny pocket of Ijincho that was essentially violence-free. Well, I bet that worked out great for the Leo Mang. Oh, and you're the sharp one, I take it. Yes. That zone became the Liu Mang's home. So there it was. A place controlled by a criminal organization, but with low crime. The first gray zone. And the Seiryu clan just accepted that. Why would they give up their territory and all its income streams like that? Because they were getting continuous payouts from the counterfeiting operation. And that wasn't the only thing. Anytime one of us did something that normally would have landed us in hot water, Ogikubo would contain it. He kept it off police reports. That kept us from losing men to the law. So there were plenty of benefits for us. All while we kept our honor. This Ogi Kubo's a pretty shrewd guy. Nah. He just used some old tricks every politician knows. Oh. Well, perhaps. But do you understand now how we benefit from it? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. And my people reap those benefits also. In the 80s, the Komijo was saved by the Ijincho Grey Zone. How? Our parent organization was the Jingon Mafia, which formed decades ago in Korea. Even only a few years ago, he was a body double for their leader. 
But every time the Jingon Mafia got crushed, some of its people would drift to Ijincho. My mother was one of those. I was young when she brought me here. Ijincho was a breath of fresh air after living so long under their ridiculous code. More and more people heard about the relief we found here. So more came. But then our safety was threatened by something else. As our numbers grew, so did our clashes with the Yokohama Lioma. You started fighting them? Not outright. Ogikubo stepped in. Right before a real war erupted, he brought us a proposal that we take over the Seiryu's counterfeiting business. It was an offer of steady income and safe territory. How could we refuse? In return, we would perform the surveillance necessary to contain the secret. That's how we started to build a system that now monitors every inch of Ijincho. It became our way to contribute to the smooth running of Ijincho, alongside the Seiryu and Liomang. So that's the origin story behind the Ijin 3. Ever since, we've all supported Ogikubo. And he supported us in kind. He used the huge streams of money from us to secure his seat at the helm of the Citizens Liberal Party. Now, no one in the cabinet can speak against him. After masterminding a way to bring peace to the city, he moved up in the world. Well, there are worse ways to climb the ladder, but I can't condone it. It's still a cover-up. <laughs> really? So you would say even perfect results don't matter if the methods are flawed? What about the police themselves? What about their alliance with all the Yakuza which grew from the scorched earth of post-war Japan? Light and dark joined hands to rebuild, and that's how we got where we are today. You can't deny the ends justify the means. Ah, well... What does it even matter what happened? Who cares about that stuff right now? It's all in Eugene Show's past. What we gotta think about is its future. So why'd you call us here? What do you want? <laughs> Your friend Nambakun, during his search for his brother, spied on us and invaded our privacy. I assume he began with the fake bills because that was his brother's subject of investigation. But he was reckless, digging through Komi Jewel affairs like a rabid raccoon. Right from the start, he's refused to show any respect to the Eugene Three. Now he's seen the counterfeiting for himself, and we have no idea where he is. We must ensure his permanent silence. Why are you telling us this? You looking to make a deal for his life or something? A deal? Kasuga, under most circumstances, all your lives would be forfeit. <laughs> but I have some idea of how this fake bill ended up in your pocket. What? Huh? You do? Out of respect for this person, I will look the other way. But who the hell was it? If you really want to know, you'll have to bring Namba to me, personally. We can't do that to Nanchan. Sure is tempting. Kasuga, but I'll pass. Nothing I need to know so bad that I'd sell out a friend. So we done here? You do realize, if word gets out about the counterfeiting, the Great Wall will crumble. And that means the end of the Grey Zone. Yeah, that would suck. For you. Look, the Great Wall keeps the peace with less than honorable means, sure. But it provides a safe haven for desperate souls with nowhere left to turn. Yeah, man, I get all that. Well, here's what you don't get, you moron. When we say no one gets in, that includes the Tojo Clan and the Omi Alliance. So, see? If we're talking about people who owe their lives to the Grey Zone, you're one of them, Kasuga-kun. Uh, what? After you were shot, the only reason the Omi didn't finish you off is because you were inside the zone. What are you trying to say? That I owe something to the city? Go ahead and act like you're above it all. 
But you've benefited from our operation as much as any of us. Fine. Still doesn't mean I'm gonna sell out a friend. Before you insist on that, I have something important to say. Yeah, what? We already have assassins hunting Namba. What the hell? Whose assassins? Mine. Somebody had to step up. And stepping up in your book? Hunting an innocent man? Unlike you, Kasuga, I don't turn down attractive offers. But don't worry. I told my guys to make it painless. But uh, my men have gotten a little rough lately. You son of a bitch. Call him off. No can do. I think one death for the sake of the whole city is worth the price. What do you say to our offer now? If you refuse, Namba will die. But aren't you going to kill him all the same if we bring him to you? Instead of worrying about that, worry about getting to him first. Your clock's ticking. Hey, we don't even know where to look. I may have an idea. Well, there you go. So, Kasuga, given all this, what will you do? I mean, guess I'm rescuing Namba from your stupid assassins. Hey, do you know what time it is? Uh, hello to you too. Kume-san, right? Sorry to barge in like this, but I wanted to see if our buddy was here. You... How did you know? Yo, Ichiban. Hey, I knew you'd find a decent place to hide. Hey man, we gotta hurry. The Ejing Three sent Liu Meng assassins after you. Liu Meng? Not Komiju? Hmm. Is it just you three? No backup? Just us, sorry to say. I see. And you have business with Nambasan? Yeah. And who are you? I haven't seen you around. <laughs> and here I thought people were watching more TV these days. Oh. I know you. You're the director of Bleach Japan. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen you on TV. My name is Ogasawara. I'm here lending my support to our Yokohama branch. The Grey Zone in Ijincho is one of the worst in the country. The police have just given up on it. But still, I never expected to find this. Counterfeiting legal currency? <laughs> Atrocious. So Namba spilled the beans, huh? Let's not mess around. You guys need to get out of here, now. We'll even go with you if it'll help you escape. That includes you, Namba. Kasuga, was this your plan all along? <laughs> Why exactly do I need to turn and run? It's not just the Komichu who are involved. The heads of the Seiryu clan and Yokohama Liumang are in on it. They sent the assassins after Namba because he knows their secret. You're screwed if you're here too, civilian or not. Ogasawara-san! I think this guy's bluffing with all the assassin talk. He's just trying to ruffle some feathers. No need to panic. No. I think he's telling the truth. What? To be honest, I thought you might be assassins yourselves. But not once you said it was just you three. That's not great wall of muscle strength. Um... I don't get it. Aren't assassins supposed to be in small groups? Oh, dear, dear Kume-kun. You have so much to learn about these criminals. But ignorance often breeds courage, and that's what I needed in the Eijin Show arm of Bleach Japan. That's... Uh... Ogasawara-san. What are you getting at? No kidding. You sure you're a civilian? <laughs> of course I am. I just know more about the criminal underworld than your average dipshit. What is with this guy? I think it's about time you come out. Lao Ma. Lao Ma? Mabuchi, why are you here? I'll handle this, Director. Thank you. My service is customer satisfaction guaranteed. Then we'll take our leave. Let's go. Hey! Namba, wait! I already told them all about the counterfeit bills. I just want to find my brother. Whether he's alive or otherwise. 
um, Ogasawara-san, what about me? Mabuchi. <laughs> Give this simpering piece of human garbage a fitting end. I didn't think this is where I'd finally see your mug. No, of course not. My own boss doesn't know I'm here. That said, I did want to meet you. I haven't been able to give you a message from Nonomiya! Slice them up however you want. Right. Take your best shot. All right, hello. Um, I'm gonna take this opportunity while the fighting is going on in this game to just give a commentary. So my reaction to Nanba, like having a brother and all that, like I, I was never upset at Nanba. Uh, I, I always understood it. Um, thought he made some pretty bad decisions, especially with teaming up with, uh, with these boys here. Um, but, but yeah. Uh, again, I apologize for there being no commentary in this video. Like I'm, I was very upset about it, but. Um, I mean, and this video is much shorter as well, because I really just... I, I sped through this chapter. Um, so it's just a lot of cutscenes and then this fight. So, um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to leave now. Enjoy the rest of the video. Um, I love you guys. statue of Guan Yu. It's a legendary Chinese weapon. So, Mabuchi puts himself on a level with ancient Chinese heroes? If he does, he's in for a rude awakening when I break his little stick! Here we go. <gasps> Try You're this on my spear, are you? Let's do this I'm ready Hey, now. thank you. Cool. You're gonna get it. Don't. Come on now. Take your best shot.
Babushi's getting serious now. Yeah, I think he's in a bad mood. Is that literally fire coming out of him? That's your David Brain talking again. But fire or not, oh, he's angry as hell. No problem. Feeling good. Going in. Try and stop. Check this out. Come on. Give it your all, everyone. I'm ready. Appreciate now. it. That's picking time. I'm not that. Come on down. now. Look at me go! <laughs> what a rush. I forgot how great this can feel. Oh good. You can still talk. <laughs> Are you enjoying this, you creep? Are you the one who killed our boss? I am. And I did. I slaughtered him. And hung him like a pig on a hook. Well, to start a fight with the Seiryu clan? <laughs> As they say, I was just following orders. Who told you to pull this kind of shit? The man you were just allowed to escape. The director of Bleach Japan, Ogasawara. He's the one who ordered you to kill Nonomiya? Why would he do that? <laughs> because what he's after is Ichincho itself. What's he on about? <clears throat> he wants to expose where Yutaka Ogikubo gets all his money. <sighs> to do that, he had to put just a tiny crack in the Great Wall. <laughs> a crack? You mean Nonomiya's death? I don't get it. Ogasawara ordered a hit so he could get rid of the Gray Zone? <laughs> He's a Bleach Japan guy? I thought they were a bunch of goody two-shoes. My question is, why would you do their bidding, Mabuchi? Why do something that would turn the e Gene 3 against you? <laughs> Ogasawara has bigger, badder friends than the Ejin Fleas. What do you mean? <sighs> the Great Wall. The Ejin Three. That's all over. The invasion starts tomorrow. Invasion? My Bleach Japan? No. <laughs> you still don't get it? Come on, Kasuga. What? The backers of Bleach Japan are the only alliance in Kamurocho. Are you shitting me? I'm going to be Jincho's version of Masumi Arakawa. I'll sell this whole town to the Omi and get rewarded handsomely for it. <laughs> They'll probably make me an officer. It's what I... <laughs> Don't ever compare yourself to Arakawa-san again. <laughs> Go. 
Guys, if the Omi Alliance is coming here... Yeah, about that. Let's go get that bastard Ogasawara to give us the lowdown. Well, he and Namba went into that back room over there. Yeah, I saw. Let's go find him. Ogasawara's gone. He went out an exit further back. Namba? Bleach Japan is gonna blow the lid off the counterfeiting scheme, which will crush the Gomi Jewel. Maybe, just maybe, they'll find my brother too. Nanchan. If only I could have done it myself. No one's ever meant more to me than my brother. Look at the life I've endured to try to find him. Did you see which way Yogasawara went? You really should steer clear of this mess, Ichiban. I just want to have some words. Stay out of it. Just stay out of it, man. Hey, you need to just focus on yourself right now. You got assassins after you. Just find somewhere to hide. At least until tomorrow. Mabuchi told us the Omi Alliance is coming tomorrow. They're invading. It'll be chaos. That's your chance to slip away, you get me? Can you do that? I didn't ask for your advice. Look, Nanchan. As much as this sucks for you, can you please think about the rest of us, too? Shut up! Think about what Mabuchi and Ogasawara did. They murdered Nonomiya out of pure greed. I know. But I need their help to find my brother. <laughs> really? You're just leaving? Want to stop me? Go for it. Hell, attack me from behind. I don't care. You know we'd never pull that kind of shit. Don't be stupid, man. We're still buds. Ugh, don't say that shit. <clears throat> Ichiban. Hey, I know how this crap feels, but we don't have time for it. Let's focus on the task at hand. Searching this Bleach Japan office. I think it's back there, and this is our chance. No one's around. Yeah, you're right. What's up? Uh, this picture. What about it? The guy shaking hands with Ogasawara. I know him. Yeah, that's Ryo Aoki, the governor. That's back when he was younger. And considering the backdrop there, probably around the time he and Ogasawara started Bleach Japan together. Aoki had to leave his post in order to run for governor, though. He's governor? He's supposed to be dead. Huh? In Kamrocho. Someone told me he died. I thought it was true. Well, I don't follow. You know Ryo Aoki? Not Aoki. I know him as... Sir, during next week's budget deliberations, the opposition party is going to fight you tooth and nail. Those fossils pushing for highway funding. It sounds like they're strongly against the infrastructure cuts. I imagine it's going to be a long fight. But you do have an appearance scheduled for that evening. Should I cancel it or maybe try to reschedule? I have an appearance? Oh, yeah. 
Isn't this the one for that newspaper? They invited a bunch of kids to that, I thought. Yes, sir. Let's not cancel it, then. Wouldn't it look bad? I'm sure those parents have spared no expense making sure their children look presentable for an occasion like this, right? I'm sure, but... It'll be fine. I'm gonna run circles around those windbags and we'll have deliberations wrapped up in no time. We can't disappoint the children, can we? Understood, sir. We'll hold the appearance as scheduled. You know what? Why don't you call it a night? Good night, then. It's Ogasawara. Good news, I hope. I finally found it. The party chair's secret weapon. Turns out it was on the other side of the Great Wall of Muscle this whole time. <laughs> Go figure. If you have any of our visitors from Kansai you can spare, I could use the extra hands. <laughs> That's fine. We're already more than well-staffed in Tokyo. I'm willing to send you all the manpower you'll need. Thank you.